Hello, everyone. Welcome to the eCyberMission Classroom. My name is Matt Hartman, and I'll be your instructor for this lesson. Today, we'll be looking at conducting research. Most of our focus will be on how to determine if websites are reliable or not. Since anyone can publish anything to the internet that they like, some sites may have information that's not as reliable as it needs to be when we're conducting our research. Hopefully, by the end of this lesson, you'll have a better idea about which sites are reliable and which are not. But before we begin, I want to make sure that you're aware that the internet is not the only source for information. When you're working on your eCyberMission project, you should also be using the library for your research. There, you can find not only books about the topic you're investigating, but magazines, journal articles, and all sorts of various print sources. These can be a little tougher to find, but the information in them is usually much better, so your time will be well spent. Let's go to our Army scientist, who will explain your task. OK, so on with our task. The first thing you need to do is complete student sheet 4-1. Your entire group should work on this together. See if you can answer the questions found on that sheet. Go ahead and pause the video while you work. How did that go? Hopefully you came up with some answers for all of those questions. Let's talk about a few of them. In the first question, you were asked about how you tell if a story your friend told you is true or not. There are many different ways to do this. Some of them might be the way your friend tells the story, if you've heard the story somewhere else, or by simply asking them if it's true. In the next question, you were asked about how you tell if a story on the internet is true. Probably the best way to do this is to find another source that can confirm or deny the story you read. Be careful though, if you find the exact same story with the exact same wording, it probably means it was just copied. See if you can find another source that tells the same story, but uses different words or is a site you trust. So then it was on to the activity. Here you had a list that looks like this. How did you do with this? Can you tell which ones are not what they seem? How did you do it? Did you use the way the URL was set up? Or maybe which letters it ended with, like .org or .gov? Finally, why does it matter where you got your information from on the internet? It matters because anyone can publish anything they like on the internet, many times for free, which means that no one is checking to make sure all of that information is correct or not. The last thing on the sheet wasn't a question, but some advice. It says, when you are questioning how reliable or reputable a site is, you need to ask who, what, where, and why. And now I'm going to give you a chance to do just that. Use student sheet 4-2 and enter the W questions for each of the sites listed. Pause the video while you do so. Hopefully, you now have a better idea about what sites are reliable and which are not. While you probably won't use any of these specific sites in your research, you can use these ideas and questions to determine if the sites you find are reliable or not. Generally, when a site ends in .org, .edu, or .gov, it will be pretty reliable. So if you want to find sites that only have a particular ending, try this. When you type whatever you are searching for, type it in quotes, and then add site colon dot org, site colon dot edu, or site colon dot gov. Take a look. See, you'll only get sites that have that ending. Remember, dot edu means they are education sites, like schools. Dot gov means they are government sites, and dot org means they are organizations. Do you know what dot com means? It actually means commercial, so someone is paying for that site. Research is critical to gaining knowledge and understanding in the field of science and engineering. It is the backbone of science, and it is a tool that allows scientists and engineers to gather useful information. In my case, research allows me to gain new information to help develop an experiment and come up with a solution to a problem that affects our fellow Americans in uniform. In my work as a research microbiologist for the U.S. Army, 
Research is not only in my title, but it is something that I do on a daily basis at work. Whether it's in the lab or at my computer, research allows me to identify problematic issues that the Army is currently facing. By researching and conducting laboratory experiments, I can successfully develop a method to come up with a solution to help solve problems that are facing soldiers. The answers that my team and I arrive at not only ensures the health and safety of our currently deployed soldiers, but also ensures the health and safety of future soldiers. To me, that's the most rewarding part of research. Identifying a significant problem that affects a large percentage of people, and through research and experimentation, arriving at solutions that will benefit the greater good. Now, back to your East Cyber Mission teacher. Looks like it's time to go on to the next lesson, state a hypothesis. Remember, if you have any questions or problems, talk to your team advisor. If there are still questions, you can contact CyberGuides on the forums at eCyberMission.com or call Mission Control between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. Monday through Friday at 1-866-GO-CYBER. See you soon.